forage crops offer an excellent nutritional source for ruminant livestock throughout the winter period. So today here I'm in a field of swedes and swedes are a root crop that offer fantastic energy. You've also got your more leafy brassicas that offer a really nice balance of both protein and energy. So there's various different types of forage crop and you can offer these to a lot of different stock. So you could choose breeding stock, store stock and growing stock for your brassicas for the winter. So when you're putting on your stock, it's really important to ensure that you've got 30% of the dry matter intake as an alternative forage. So that may be a grass run back, it may be hay silage, something alternative like that. And that just really helps prevent any issues such as bloat. You also want to check their condition score. So when they're going on to the crop for the first time, you want to, to just do the, do the assessment and if anyone is lean or is leaner than they should be for the stage of their production, then pull them off and actually get their condition score to where they should be prior to them going on to the crop. So with our different types of forage crop, we've got different dry matters. So the higher the dry matter, the lower the amount of water and the lower the dry matter, the higher the amount of water that's in the crop. So those would generally mean that the crop is softer. And if you think about your type of livestock that you're offering it to, if say it's cash jows and they're limited for teeth, then you might be better off looking at one of the crops that would have more water content in it. Now, when you're setting up your grazing of your forage crop, you ideally want to have a long narrow strip. So your long strip allows everybody in to, to eat the crop when the fence is moved. But having it narrow means that they're not standing all over the crop. They're not underutilizing it. So they're not cherry picking. They're not eating all of the leaf and then trying to eat the bulb and kind of upsetting how much of the balance of energy and protein that they're taking in. For sheep, you really want to move your fence every two to three days. And for cattle, ideally it would be a, a daily shift. Now, obviously we've got a lot of different fodder crops and each of them has a completely different component of energy and protein. And when you're working with something like fodder beet, it's really quite specialist and that the rumen takes 21 days to adjust to any nutritional change. And something like that that's really high in sugar is a really, really big change for livestock. Sheep are fantastic selective grazers. They will go into a field, they'll have a pick of the crop and then they'll probably go out onto your end rig and, and have a little pick of either grass or if it's an arable run back or whatever it is. Whereas cattle, they'll tend to go straight to the crop. And, and that is where you really have to transition them slowly and surely. So you're looking to make sure that everybody's actually eating the crop, that you're training them to eat it and not moving on your fence until you're happy that everybody is eating it. And from there, then you can move it on a, a daily shift basis. Some of the other crops aren't just doesn't have to be quite so rigid, but you do really need to ensure that you're transitioning them on nice and slowly. So for people that are grazing sheep on forage crops, some people actually choose to belly clip before they go on. So it just means if you've got lambs, then they're clean for slaughter. But it also means if you've got yows, and when it comes round to lambing, they're not going to have a, the dirty belly. So when the lambs are going in to, to go to the udder, the chances of them picking up dirt at the same time are reduced vastly. It's essential when you're grazing your forage crops that the livestock have got access to water as well as shelter. So the two of these are very, very important. Also ensuring that you're not that you're considering the environment when you're supplying the, the water and shelter, that there's an actual supply and you're not damaging any water courses in the process. 